joke, I've been a money maker, I've been a record breaker, taking credit as an educator, I've been known to spit the flows and make it shaky, shaky thing, popping, locking, stopping, let it hang, watch us as we drop this hip hop, it's like it stays, we make the whole room drop and everybody sing, we want the funk, we gotta have that funk, we kick it old school, we think we're so cool, we take it back to the past, we go and act a fool, ah, up jumps the middle finger, make my... Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Sports Buzz, a fanatical view. I am your host, Scott D. Lewis, here live in studio Comcast Cable, Channel 23, downtown Danbury, Connecticut, on this somewhat balmy, perhaps as the, uh, as the, uh, hello, the music in here is awfully loud, guys. Do you guys realize the music is blaring in the studio? Thank you very much. Um, as the calendar turns, maybe we get out of that cold early part of the fall and into some a warmer, perhaps Indian summer hitting us as it was a balmy 68 degrees uh, out there today on this November 1st. So that was pretty good. And uh, other good things happening uh, in the world of sports, which we will get to in a moment. But we are here until 7 as I adjust my head here, uh, adjusting to that bombardment of my favorite reggae band, Fatty Roots. Thank you very much. Uh, we are live. 203-792-4101 is the number. Uh, call in if you want to uh, get on the horn and talk about anything. We'll be happy to do it. I also want to say happy belated birthday to my right-hand man who is back in the director's chair after last week being out here with me. We had one week reprieve where our old director, Mike Tui, was here. Uh, and Bob got to sit out here, my right-hand man, uh, but he is back in the director's chair, but I will wish him a happy birthday. Bob gets to celebrate Halloween and his birthday every year on the same day, so happy Halloween to everyone. Hope it was a safe and fun-filled evening for all, and happy birthday to my right-hand man, Mr. Bob Rodgers Jr., whose show Spotlight On Tuesday nights at 9 and Wednesdays at 12 is right here on Comcast Channel 23, so you can check that out. Mike's show is uh, Expose Cinema Friday nights at 9, Wednesdays at 1. He's trying to get back in the swing of things. We filmed a, one for him last week, so that was good. And uh, we'll see if he can keep that going. Uh, Tyler is here, our uh, new guy on the block who's been hanging out, even though his, uh, he's had to uh, endure what he just can't believe. A Red Sox won through the run through the playoffs and winning a World Series. And then now each week he sees more and more Red Sox gear showing up on the set. And he is a Yankee fan, so it's been a little tough for him to handle. But he comes down, he enjoys the show, and he helps with the audio. So he's doing a good job. And I do think word on the uh, street through the walls here is that Strange Man is present and in the building. If that is correct, why is he hiding behind the door? Send him out, get him on the microphone out here, put him behind the camera with the headset. We could use him right out here, tell him to come on out. There's no reason to hide, strange man. Get out here and we can start celebrating this World Series. Number four of this century for the Boston Red Sox, number nine overall. Last week I mentioned uh, this show is derived from my uh, former days as writing a column for Hat City Entertainment. And the uh, column was called Sports Buzz, a Fanatical View. And in 2007, after they beat the Rockies for their second uh, world title in uh, the early parts of the 2000s, I said it's beginning to look an awful lot like the early 1900s when they won five of the first uh, 15 World Series titles between 1903 and 1918. Well, this group of uh, Red Sox got four in that same time period. Uh, not quite five, but we will certainly take four and another, re, uh, you know, what they did in the early part of the 1900s is happening again. This time around, we're hoping maybe they don't sell away somebody like Babe Ruth to New York Yankees and uh, start another curse. We will be much more happier if we don't have to endure that sort of thing again and we can just continue on as this team is uh, built to last, really. And the Red Sox did get it done. Uh, this past weekend, Sunday night, was the finale as they won it 5-1 to one in five, beating the Dodgers four games to one. Um, and that was tremendous. It got a little tight. I mean, 4-1 seems, uh, you know, like maybe that's a, a runaway for the Red Sox. But really, it was much closer than that after they won the first two games in Boston. They went out to L.A. and they lost that unbelievable 
game in the eight, uh, 18 innings in game three on Friday night, a wild one that went deep into the evening, uh, you know, 3.30 in the morning by the time it was all said and done uh, when they lost that game on Friday. So now it was a 2-1 series, and then they were losing uh, 4-0 in the seventh inning of game four, and it looked like all of a sudden this series was going to be tied and uh, we weren't sure what was going to happen. But then here he is right there, Mitch Moreland, or as my friend Andy called him, Mitchie Fourbags, comes through with a three-run homer right there to get them immediately back in the game, cut it to 4-3. And then the eventual MVP, Steve Pierce, delivers the de tying uh, home run in the eighth inning to get this game tied up and stunned the LA faithful out there in La La Land to make it 4-4. And then Steve Pierce also delivered a game-breaking three-run double in the ninth inning after Rafael Devers, Rafi's Revenge, got the uh, go-ahead run to start off that ninth inning rally uh, to make it 5-4 and give them the lead. And then uh, Pierce delivered the three-run Blast, uh, Bogart's got a hit to uh, pad that lead up to 9-4. Eventually they won that game 9-6 in uh, the fourth game there to re-solidify their dominance in this series and uh, turn what looked to be a sure 2-2 series into a 3-1 advantage and uh, eventually series over as they went into game five with that confidence, with that series lead. And then Pierce delivered the two-run dagger in the first inning against Kershaw in game five to give them that 2-0 lead early. And uh, it was pretty much on after that. David Price, unbelievable performance out of him on short rest. He gives up a first pitch leadoff home run to start game five. Uh, and then after that was completely lights out. It got to the sixth inning when Mookie Betts right there hits a uh, home run to make it three to one. And then J.D. Martinez added one in the eighth. And eventually, uh, Steve Pierce capped his MVP crowning with another home run himself, and it was a 5-1 win. And David Price, who could have been possibly the MVP, he got the win in game two, giving up only two runs. He did pitch in relief, although he was not great in relief in game four, um, but he did come in. He was warming up in the other nights as well. Um, and then he, uh, or actually, I think that was game three, he pitched in relief, and then, um, you know, he was warming up in the other nights, too, and then he comes out and pitches tremendous into the eighth inning. Uh, he retired 14 batters in a row at one point. There we see the Bethel guy, Matt Barnes, was all over this series. He got the win in game one, as a matter of fact. Bethel native Matt Barnes can always say he won a game in the World Series as he was credited with the victory in the Chris Sale game that he started. Uh, and, uh, Barnes came in and relieved him through the middle part of the innings. And uh, he got the win in that game. Um, and really, the whole bullpen was just tremendous. Uh, Joe Kelly was a revelation. Unbelievable what he did, because at the end of the season, nobody uh, wanted to see him even on the roster, let alone in a game. But he was tremendous. And then, of course, it was Nathan Evaldi was the guy who really was just unbelievable what he did in this series. You know, going strong in relief in game uh, one and two, which really carried them to victory and the 2-0 lead. And then in game three, in that tie game, going to extra innings, he ends up pitching six innings, throws over 90 pitches in relief in that game as uh, the error was committed by Kinsler when they could have won it in 13. But the game continued after that as the Dodgers staved off being down 3-0, really, it could have been a sweep in this series if Kinsler doesn't make that error on the final out of what would have been a victory in 13 innings for the Red Sox in Game 3. Uh, but it, then Evaldi had to continue on late into the night, 3.30 in the morning. He eventually gives up the walk-off home run for the Dodgers' only real moment uh, of pure joy. They thought they had some joy in Game 2 uh, when uh, Yasiel Puig... Um, as the lights go out on the screen, as Yasio Puig tried to put the lights out on the game. <laughs> and 
We are lost now here in the world of Comcast Live Television. <laughs> the game and the action just got too much. We had to dim the lights. But, um, you know, Puig gave them that moment, but really their only big moment was the victory when they walked it off in the 18th. And it was really a mercy at that point because there was really nobody else to pitch. Pomerantz was the only guy left besides maybe Sale as well. But uh, it was actually a relief to see that game end even in defeat. And I thought the thing that came out of that game that people didn't talk about, they, they viewed this in the wrong way, the media did. Everybody talked about how the Red Sox burned their starter for game four, which was true, but they had two other guys available. Pomerantz, who did not end up pitching, but Eduardo Rodriguez, who did, and pitched extremely well into the sixth inning before his manager left him in a little bit too long, but he pitched tremendous. So they had two other guys to go, but the thing was, Evaldi ate up all those innings. The rest of the Red Sox relievers all took care of business in their uh, usual usual usage situation, going, you know, part, you know, two thirds of an inning, one inning. Nobody had to go long in that game, whereas the Dodgers, all their relievers did as uh, Dave Roberts went to his closer for two innings. He went to his setup guy for two innings. Those guys all got burned out, plus other guys had to pitch uh, high impact, late extra inning innings. Those guys got fried as well. So the bullpen for the Dodgers was much more damaged than the Red Sox because Evaldi, as we see him right there, uh, was the one who ate the innings and the high pressure late inning, late night innings. So that was actually a saving grace. And when he came off the mound, Evaldi, the Red Sox team just embraced him completely. David Price got out of the, out of the dugout first, stayed with him the entire rest of the night, Apparently, in the clubhouse, in the locker room, the team gave him a standing ovation as they knew what he did and how he gutted it out and pitched tremendous, you know, for the third night in a row, basically, and throwing over 90 pitches was just unworldly. And then Price stayed with him through the uh, press conferences, through his interviews, and onto the bus and back to the hotel as uh, he made sure he knew, everybody knew what he did for the team. And the team was reinvigorated after that. Chris Sale also was a guy who was a little bit unsung for what he did as he got the team fired up when they fell behind 4-0 in the seventh inning. Uh, Chris Sale lit into the offense at that point after they went, you know, 18 innings where they could barely score any runs, scored those two runs, were getting shut out through seven. And he just started dropping f-bombs on the guys saying you know cursing them out saying pick it up pick it up the guy out there is throwing only two effing pitches get it done pick it up we're the best team let's go and the team completely responded as Moreland comes through with the three-run homer and uh, Pierce with the home run and then Devers with the big hit for the go-ahead Pierce ices it with the three-run double they come back the next day day with four home runs and it's back and it's the Red Sox, and it's them winning a championship, fourth in this century, most in this century by any team. They are clearly the dominant team of the 2000 new, uh, de new century. And I see Mike Fadden coming through as uh, he is here, and I'm sure he's excited to listen to me talk all about the Red Sox. All these guys here, the Mets fans, the Yankees fans. Why didn't Strange Man, the only Red Sox fan, come out? He should have come out. But, uh, you know, and there he is. Drop the pictures, Bob. Drop the pictures. Let's get a look at them. Come on, dip your head in here, strange man. Number one, baby. Number one, baby. What Both are we? Smiles in Boston. You know it. Um, happy belated birthday to uh, Mr. Hubble, strange dad, in Maine. Okay, oh, when was me? his birthday? Uh, he's 80 can plus 24 me? days, so we missed that a little bit. He served in the U.S. Navy. Yeah, I can hear you. And was stationed in Alaska. It's 80 plus 24 days. All right, so that was about uh, three or okay. so weeks ago. Uh, stationed in Alaska and Hawaii before they were uh, states. St uh, states? Okay, but before he was back stateside. So happy birthday. We wished Bob a happy birthday. As a strange man's just going to stalk me on the set now. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, 
<laughs> and we will wish a happy belated birthday to Mr. Hubble Strange Dad. All right. And Strange Man, of course, finally shows his face after all this time. Why? Because there was a Boston Championship. Should we get to this? Should we ruin everybody's night? All the non-Boston fans and really get to this part of it? All right, so 2000, uh, 2004, 2007, 2000, uh, where am I? I'm looking at my wrong numbers here. 2013 and 2018 for the Red Sox to go along with 1903, 1912, 1915, 1916, 1918. But let's add to that the New England Patriots, 2002, 2004, 2005, 2015, 2017, the Boston Celtics, 2008, Bruins, 2011. But it all started up in stores, Connecticut, for New England sports fans in 1999 when the UConn men's basketball program yep. knocked off the mighty Duke Blue Devils in 99. They backed that up in 2004. 2011, 2014, we know the women have done plenty. And if you are Italian, uh, like I am as well, Heritage, you also got to celebrate a World Cup by Viva La Italia, as Mike's phone is going up, in 2006. So since 99, I don't even know if I can count that high. Four, nine, 10, 11, uh, 15, 16 championships for my teams since two, 1999. 16, there's only been, what, 19 years since then. 16 out of 19 years if you broke it down year by year. Uh, there's been a little bit of crossover at that. So unbelievable. And of course, it is the 100 year anniversary of the sale of Babe Ruth to the Yankees. We implore you, Boston Red Sox management, do not do that again. This team is young. Their manager, Alex Cora, <laughs> is young. Uh, they're built to last. They got some pitchers lined up. I mean, consider this, Mike. Chris Sale was basically injured and sick and didn't really do anything. That's he right. closed out the final game. He pitched four innings in game one. But really, they didn't do that with anything with him. Uh, you know, they're. You know, reserve players, Devers, Nunez, Holt, Moreland, Pierce, Vasquez, Leon, those guys did as much damage as Mookie Betts, M -m 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 Mookie, JD, and Bogarts, and the other stars, Jackie Bradley Jr. did. Uh, so looking ahead, wow, unbelievable, and they will play with confidence now. Mike, what did you think of this whole thing and uh, them getting it done four games to one as we say hello to the, the Met Mania? They dominated. I mean, what can you say? I mean, they, the Yankees got lucky. Let's be honest. The Red Sox might have been, you know, well, we, we shouldn't sweep them, you know, but they were just dumb. The Dodgers, That's all we you got say. lucky in 18, correct. Uh, I mean, that game should have been over in 13 innings. Absolutely. Kinsler makes an error on the final out of the game in 13, and they have to continue to play. How about this? They go 7-1 and one on the road mm -hmm. in their entire playoff run, 4-2 uh, and two at home. They didn't actually have to play at home that much because they finished all these series out on the road. I mean, yep. they knock off the Yankees by winning the final two games of that series in New York. Uh, they knock off the defending champion Astros, who came back and won over 100 games this year by winning three straight. Yep. Hello, Houston. And then they take two out of three in uh, Dodger Stadium. That was the other interesting thing. Okay. The Dodger Stadium is the third oldest stadium compared to Fenway, which is the oldest. The Cubs, Wrigley Field, is the uh, second. Uh, so there was history there with the stadiums back and forth. I will say the Dodger fan base was tremendous. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere in those uh, in those games was outrageous. Uh, really quite good. Very impressed with that. A lot of Red Sox fans out there, however, mm -hmm. filling the seats. And they got loud for sure. Uh, but that was just tremendous, uh, you know, to win 11-3 and three overall. So they win 119 games total compared to 54 losses. If you remember, Mike, I don't know if you remember this. I think Bob was probably out in the chair way back then, and Tui was running the show directing-wise. But we talked about that hot start they had came on the heels of what they did in spring. Now, we don't necessarily take into consideration what spring is. Right. But they won 20, most games in spring as well, 24 games, 24 and mm -hmm. 9. So you add that up, 143 wins since spring training mm -hmm. began and the playoffs ended. 
143 wins. This team got used to winning in spring. They right. jumped out of the gate early. They struggled for a very brief period of time when the Yankees got super hot mm -hmm. and actually took the lead uh, in the division for a short period of time. But when it came down to it, they swept the Yankees four straight, and it was over then in the division. Uh, they had home field wrapped up throughout early as well, and they took care of business. What a team. What a year. Just absolutely tremendous. I mean, there's a lot of talk about best. I, if you go by the numbers, best Red Sox season ever, of course. Second best uh, regular season or any season uh, by the numbers, uh, strictly speaking. But, I mean, you can look at the team any way you want. There'll be, you know, if you broke it down player by player, position by position, I still say it's hard pressed to be, uh, have Manny Ramirez and David Ortiz as the backbone of your <laughs> middle of your lineup with the other guys they also mm -hmm. had on that team, plus Pedro Martinez and Kurt Schilling, uh, and plus their bullpen at that situation, so those, those teams in the early 2000s. Uh, but anyway, you slice it, just tremendous. So obviously, I'm feeling good about it <laughs> and uh, pretty we can, happy. You can tell, Scott. The parade was good. Too much beer thrown. I think the trophy got damaged. Alex Cora got hit, I think, with a beer can as well. Mookie Betts was swatting beer cans out of the sky. Unbelievable. So uh, calm down out there, Red Sox fans. <laughs> you don't want to throw beer at your own guys. Really. But we will turn the page, much like the calendar got turned to November, and we will uh, start shifting our gears. Uh, we don't have, you know, about eight minutes or so, seven minutes probably left in this show tonight, and we're going to talk about some other things. But, you know, in the upcoming weeks, we'll get more into all the other stuff and see what's going on. But let's mention the NFL. The G-Men, thankfully, are on a bye week, Mike. So uh, Bob's not going to have to sit through another loss, not going to have to watch Eli get sacked seven times. Uh, the Redskins, five and two, playing with some purpose on defense as well. Back-to-back -back weeks, they shut down... You know, Saquon Barkley only had 38 yards the week before that. Ezekiel Elliott couldn't get much going on the ground for the uh, Cowboys. And the Redskins all of a sudden are solidifying their lead in that division at 5-2. The Eagles are 4-4 four and four as they went to London to beat uh, the Jaguars, who are now have lost four in a row. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you something, Mike. I really think the Pats played possum in that game, week two game down there in Jacksonville. They knew it was a much bigger game for Jacksonville than for themselves. It was 96 degrees on that day in Jacksonville. Uh, Edelman wasn't on the roster yet with his suspension early. A couple other guys that were working into the system. Josh Gordon wasn't signed yet. They didn't make that trade. I think they uh, pulled one of the Bill Belichick classics where he said, you know what, this game doesn't mean anything to us. We'll, we'll go out there and try to win, but we're not going to show them that much. And if we okay. lose, no big deal. And they laid down for that game. And uh, the Jaguars now have lost four straight. They're three and four. That is crazy. Absolutely insane. The Jets, your Jets now lost two in a row after winning two in a row. Um, I was a little surprised. I guess, I don't know. I thought the Bears might uh, be struggle a little bit more in that game. Um, what did you see when you watched your Jets lose 24-10 this weekend? The defense... Defense, defense. Defense didn't you, have it. Exactly. I mean, you know, you know, Sam Darnold was going to struggle. He's a rookie quarterback. Mm -hmm. But in reference to the defense, if you heard what Jamal Adams said during a radio interview this week, he is? said the guys, in this case, the defense weren't ready to play. And my thing is, you're about, you know, you're eight games into, into the season. If you're not ready to play now, when are you going to be ready to play? You well, know? you know, those three game home. Uh, Homes for three straight weeks can sometimes be a bad thing once you back out on the road when you've been sitting at home for a month. All of a sudden you're out on the road and the Bears had a couple bad losses in a row. They right. lost that game in Miami they never should have lost. They lost that Hail Mary where they almost beat the Patriots. So you know the Bears wanted to get back at it and get back on the winning track. So that was maybe a little bit of a tough spot. Uh, the Jets are at the Dolphins this weekend who are four and four. Jets now three and five. Uh, the Jets would like to get a little revenge going back down to Miami for that loss they had earlier. Is Osweiler still in for the Dolphins? So yes. that could be a good spot for the Jets to right their ship. Patriots uh, won a much closer than the final score, 25-6 Monday night game against the Bills. 
This game was 12-6 in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. They couldn't score a touchdown, and then they did finally score, and then they got a pick six late to ice it. They have now won four in a row, and they're at 6-2. and two. Sunday night against the Green Bay Packers, and the Packers fumbled away their chance to knock off the undefeated Rams as their uh, kick return guy took it out of the end zone when they were down one with two minutes left, 205. They would have had the two-minute warning all the time in the world just to get a field goal to win that game in L.A. But uh, he fumbled on the kick return, and that was that. So it's Packers at Patriots Sunday night. I mean, Monday night to Sunday night, uh, three weeks ago they played Sunday night. So three out of the last four weeks, Patriots are under the bright lights. I don't like it when that happens. Um, so interesting things happening uh, there. Steelers uh, and Ravens play this weekend. That's a good game. Steelers now suddenly are 4-2-1 and one after their early struggles. Rams do remain uh, undefeated 8-0. They're going against our guy Tyler. So Tyler, this is one of these kind of guys. We're going to talk about <laughs> Tyler for a second. He's a Yankee fan. He's a Celtics fan. Uh -oh. And he's a New Orleans Saints fan. So uh, he's looking for his Saints to knock off the uh, undefeated Rams this weekend. I think that game's down in New Orleans. Saints 6-1. and one. Uh, Interesting stuff going on there. Texans have won five in a row. Okay. That's interesting. Chiefs remain uh, pretty fired up at 7-1. Chargers 5-2. College football, the first playoff rankings came out. Bama, Clemson, LSU, Notre Dame. The team that's won 20 straight games dating back to last year is number 12. It's a not a playoff, it's an invitation. And uh, right now, UCF is not getting invited. Number 12, I mean, give me a break. Yeah. NBA Celtics are looking a little better after their mediocre start. Uh, they're at home tonight for a pretty big game against the undefeated Bucks. 5-2 and two Celtics, 7-0 and oh Milwaukee Bucks. Cavs fired their coach, Teron Lou. <laughs> Saw that coming. Uh, MLS playoffs got started uh, last night. The Red, uh, the Red Bulls on decision day won the Supporters' Shield, so they are the top team in all of MLS, and they uh, got the bye week. But NYCFC beat the Philadelphia Union 3-1 last night, so they advance, and they will take on the Atlanta United FC. I did want to mention also playoff-wise, we have not talked NASCAR okay. in a while as we get inside a minute. But uh, our boy, the Middletown native, Connecticut kid, Joey Logano, is back in the mix as he won this weekend in a, uh, te in a show. And, oh, here we go. Drop the picture. Drop the picture. Wait, wait till the picture's gone. Oh, we missed the confetti. But Joey Logano, it's a celebration. <laughs> the timing wasn't great. All right, we're running out of time. Joey Logano is in the final four of the NASCAR playoffs. I don't know. We could talk about an NHL in the final 30 seconds. Who cares? We'll get into all that. Okay. Confetti. It's another Red Sox celebration. Is Strange Man going to clean up his mess this time? If you remember the last time the Patriots won, he came and dropped a bunch of confetti, and then he took off, and we were vacuuming it up for the next two years. Ah, uh, it feels good to be a champion, I gotta tell you. <laughs> All right, are we out of time? I'm ready to go. We'll see you next time. Go Red Sox. It's amazing, nothing got in my drink. <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> now we got a mess to clean up.